That's who I am. All right. Oh, wow. I'm finally looking out and I see so many familiar faces. And everybody's like, is he going to be able to start on time? I can start early, actually. Sorry for coming in last minute. It's been one of those days where you think to yourself, really? What's the, what's the learning opportunity today? It'll, it'll make sense later on today, I think. So go ahead. Good sure. to you. Okay, yeah. we'll get started. All right, um, I'm going to turn off my phone. It's been buzzing like crazy today. So my name is Michael, and it's wonderful to come back. Thank you for filling the room. Sarah emailed um, the other night and said that there were about 50 people registered, so that's wonderful. So um, I've been here a few times before, and we actually have three dates on the calendar for next year. And I just printed up my 2025 calendar, and Sarah is going to make those available maybe when you leave today. And it's a two-sided paper because on the reverse, the calendar for the Winter Lights Festival at the Eleanor Cabot Bradley Estate is now out. And um, that starts up the Friday after Thanksgiving. And I'll be there almost every night from that Friday through New Year's Day, playing from 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock every night. If you, um, if you haven't been to the Eleanor Cabot Bradley Estate, it's a beautiful, beautiful um, estate. And there's a 1913 Steinway inside that I get to play. And some of you in the audience have been there already, so please come again. So uh, anyway, um, that's the, 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 some administrative stuff. Uh, Luke is here to record this program for television. So yes, and um, I don't know when it'll air, but at some point in, in time you can be on the lookout for that. And then... The other announcement for the community center is that Thursday there's a big wellness fair uh, here, so please consider uh, coming back and supporting um, the, those activities that day. Okay, that's all I can think of. I have dressed like a leaf today, <laughs> and, and that is purposeful. I, and many of you have seen me play uh, before, and you know that I do piano arrangements of pieces, and I find the ability to, to connect one piece to another, and today there are a few where I'm doing sets of three, and that is a symbol for this music too, this idea of three, because a three is the rhythm of a waltz, which is, for me, the rhythm of life. And I'll weave that into stories that I share with you uh, today. The other theme for the, this month, I was thinking of the uh, Hunter's Moon. Do you know when the Hunter's Moon is? Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, it's a super moon, too. The Hunter Moon is a super moon. And a super moon means there tends to be about three or four a year. And it's when the Earth is very close to the moon so it seems a little bit bigger. So I have moon songs for you. And the title of every piece, or in the lyrics, almost, is this idea of the full moon. What are some songs that have moon in the title? Moon River is the last one. Blue moon comes midway through. That one keeps coming up, and Moon Over Miami is the other one? Yeah, those two keep coming up. I don't know those two. Maybe another time. By the Light of a Silvery Moon? By the Light of a Silvery Moon. Is that the name of it, or is it? It's the lyrics of the song, I think. Um, she just said Moonlight in Vermont. Moonlight in Vermont, yes, that's a good one, too. I didn't bring that one either. <laughs> fly Me to the Moon. How about Fly Me to the Moon? Yeah. yeah. And then Harvest Moon by Neil Young for the younger audience. I've never played Neil Young's music before for you, but that's on today's program. So that's four, but it's not the one that I'm going to start with. And the one that I start with is actually in every single piece that I played today. It's from the 1800s. What would that be? Moonlight Bay. Moonlight Bay uh, Sonata. Sonata. The Moonlight Sonata. This famous triplet um, melody. It's 
It's beautiful. It's melancholy, though. There's a sadness to it. And Beethoven did not call it the Moonlight Sonata. He called it Sonata Number 14 in C Sharp Major. <laughs> It's not very catchy. So um, a gentleman who was writing a music review of it, a music critic, five years after Beethoven died, said it reminded him of moonlight shining on the Lucerne Lake in Germany. And the name stuck. Everyone in the world now refers to that piece as the Moonlight Sonata. But if Beethoven went to have returned as a ghost for Halloween, and you said, hey, Beethoven, play that really, uh, what's that, uh, that Moonlight Sonata of yours? He'd look at you like you were nuts. He would have no idea what you're talking about. He was deaf. Well, he was deaf, too. Yes, that's true. Not when he wrote the Moonlight Sonata, otherwise known as Sonata number 14. Now, here's the thing, though. Beethoven um, took this from another piece. We would call that plagiarism today. In Beethoven's time, it was just called creative inspiration. <laughs> because Mozart wrote the Moonlight Sonata opening in 1782. 20 years before Beethoven. And he called it fantasy in D minor. And that is the exact opening of the Moonlight Sonata. Interesting. Well, that allows me to take the Moonlight Sonata, turn it into Mozart's fantasy in D minor, and then go back and finish with the first movement of the of Moonlight Sonata. So there you go. I'll stop talking, and I'll let the music do the chatting now.
Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Um, I played it a little more ominous for Halloween, right? <laughs> it's not about the notes. It's how you push the keys, right? And the motion that you put in. So yes, Beethoven took that opening, but then he took it in an entirely new direction. And I love that Mozart piece because Mozart um, wrote that piece and he vacillates, shall we say, between that melancholy note and that solemn. And then there's joy in it too. He's balancing out the sadness and the sorrow which life entails. And he has a lot of this little chromaticism. He has these... And that'll come in in the next set of pieces. I forgot that this piano's on wheels. And it's gonna... We're gonna have fun today. It's gonna wanna run away from me. So if you see me pause and pull the piano closer, it's because it wants to scoot away. So, uh, the next piece of music is the second moon song. It's called Flying to the Moon. However, it was another name. that is, what is your name? Faith. As Faith said, just like the Moonlight Sonata's real name is Sonata number 14, Flying to the Moon's real name is? In other words. In other words. It's good. I'm so glad you showed up when I asked you to plant you in the <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. I couldn't have asked for a better segue. So yes, in other words, that's what it was referred to for 10 years, from 1954 until Sinatra recorded it in 1964. And then, because the U.S. was starting to send things to the moon, NASA took it as their theme song for a few years. And it became known as Fly Me to the Moon. Yeah. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. For the 10 years prior, just like Beethoven would not have known what you're talking about if you said Moonlight Sonata, no one would have known what you were talking about. Play that song Fly Me to the Moon. They would have said as Faith said, oh, you mean in other words? So yes, in other words. Now, here's the thing about that song, is if I play it like this, The Moonlight Sonata. Yes, so I'm going to play Fly Me to the Moon first, like Beethoven and Mozart would have enjoyed hearing it. And then I'll do it with a nice classical flair. And then I'm going to turn it into a completely different song, and we'll do main that tune. to frolic in the autumn in the autumn mist. That's right. We had a lot of autumn mist yesterday. So I will turn flying to the moon into um, puff the magic dragon. But I'll do them both classical style first, and then I'll up the beat and change them into more jazzy upbeat versions. Here we go.
Yes, in other words, in other words, Fly Me to the Moon and Puff the Magic Dragon heard very differently than, than um, you and Peter, Paul, and Mary. They're up there in heaven with Beethoven and Sinatra and Mozart saying, what the heck is going on down there? What are they doing? And Mozart really is the one to say, all of you did that, and then he did that to it. What's going on? So... So the next are uh, three songs for the sweet treats of the season. And admittedly, none of these will find their ways into your uh, basket, uh, most likely. The first is in relation to the famous holiday, which is on October 8th every year. What is that? I know, this is where whenever I do this program, there's complete, absolute silence, and there's concern. People are thinking, what did I miss? <laughs> it's true. If you were in my position looking at everyone's faces, you're like, wait a second. It's National Fluffernutter Day. <laughs> of course. National Fluffernutter Day. For those of you not in the know, you're not from Massachusetts. Because fluff was created in 1917 in Somerville. And it's marshmallow cream. And if you combine it with peanut butter, you get a marshmallow uh, fluffernutter sandwich. So I, I have an affinity for marshmallows because I share the same day as my birthday is National Fluffernutter Day. Yeah. Yes. So yes, and I grew up with fluff and I love marshmallows. So the only song that I could find that has marshmallows in the title is this one. A Marshmallow World, which is a Christmas carol, which is appropriate for October because that's when Christmas decorations come out. <laughs> it used to be after Halloween, but no more. It's like they come out the week before, at least when you go to CVS, but like a few days before Halloween, you see them start to clear out the shelf to put in Christmas decorations and stuff. So anyway, I thought, well, let's kick the season off with the Marshmallow World. So now that song is also an oom pa pa oom pa pa oom pa pa, which is the same rhythm as Beethoven and Mozart. It's a waltz. It's a one two three one two three, but the accent is differently, and you want to dance to it. And I also have an affinity for oom pa pa music because I'm half Polish and half German. So there's a lot of oom pa pa going on around. So I'm going to play this as an oom pa pa, thinking of Oktoberfest as well. So lots of reasons to include a Christmas carol called Marshmallow World in October. Now the second song goes like this. It's cream-colored ponies and 
Apple Crisp apple strudel. So thinking of this season of apple picking. So we're going to do marshmallows, sugar plums, and crisp apple strudels. And if you come to Winter Lights in uh, December, you can hear all of these pieces again. So this is a touch of the holiday season that is upon us.
It just makes you smile. Well, now it's time to be sad. <laughs> the most beautiful and sad autumn song ever. Yes, autumn leaves, they drift by my window. Sad love song. Um, I'm uh, going to play it by maintaining what was never my conscious intention. And this is oftentimes the case, and some of you that have seen me before, I've shared the same sentiment. Oftentimes I come up with the program, I design the program, and I start to do the arrangements, and only looking back do I realize wow, all these connections were in there, and I didn't put the connections in. The connections were already there. They just presented themselves to me afterwards, just like life. Life only makes sense looking back. Every song not only has the Moonlight Sonata embedded in it, in triplet form, one, two, three, four, five, six, but it has that rhythm, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And as I am moving now, that flow is what I call the waltz of life. The waltz of life. And we all waltz with a loved one from the moment that we entered this planet because we were rocked. And it's really a waltz. It's really a sway. And we're gently brought into this world and cuddled in this world. And when I watch these falls, yes, they may spiral quickly down, but if you see some, they gracefully and graciously make their way and sway and rock their way to their heaven, which is the forest floor. Our heaven is above. Theirs, their resting place, is in the forest floor. And so I changed this rhythm so that you can visualize that a little easier. And remember, leaves are clinging to the mother tree, just like all of us have clung and still do to things in our life. And at some point, we must let go. And that is what a leaf does. It lets go to sacrifice itself for the next generation. You'll look at leaves differently now as they wither out here by our window, they have sacrificed themselves to grow the next generation. Just like every one of you and me has sacrificed in our lives to grow the next generation. And so I really want to pull that presence and that meditation out of you to think about that. Falling leaves, the leaves that each of you are and the sacrifices that you have made for others. So that's what I'm going for here. However, it, I don't want it to end sad. And it does end sad. It ends on this chord. That is the Moonlight Sonata chord. It's a sad minor chord. So I am adding in a song that represents Leaf's enlightenment. As they reach their heaven, they are enlightened. And you'll hear this. It's Neil Young's Harvest Moon, but heard very differently. So we're going to do a leaf meditation, autumn leaves, and then Harvest Moon, thinking of leaves enlightenment as they rest on the forest floor.
and they kept trying to come back to one another, but each time, one person was here and one person was there. And that's that famous line, me on the ground and you in midair. And so they were never able to quite connect again. And so they had to, like the leaves, let go of that dream and rest with that. So I'll play uh, Send in the Clowns and then I'll turn it into memory.
Thank you. <laughs> Ooh, that's a beautiful one, right? Yeah. Oh. It's how I keep my trim figure. <laughs> I just practice that 10 hours a day. So, I don't need to exercise. Um, I think I will um, uh, finish with, um, I'll do an extended version um, of the last two pieces. I'll do um, my favorite moon song, which is... It's so beautiful. Uh, sometimes I'm hesitant to take such a pretty song and do anything with it, but I do want but, or and, I am going to do something with it. But I actually think it makes it even more beautiful because it becomes um, an even slower piece, a slower love song, a beautiful love song, by changing the rhythm to the rhythm of life. And so you're going to hear it as... And by doing that, it allows me to connect it to the second beautiful love song. And that's pretty too. Yes, Unchained Melody, the beautiful love song from the movie of the same name in 1955. Now, I wasn't alive then, so I became most familiar with it when it was in a movie appropriate for Halloween Ghost. called Ghost. Yes. And so what I'll do is Unchained Melody is in 12 8 time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And I will turn Moon River into that melody so I can uh, rhythm, so I can seamlessly go from one to the other, and then I'll go back again. And when I finish, I'll finish by playing um, Moon River more like you're used to hearing. Mm -hmm.
Gave it back, so thank you very much. That um, some of you may have heard at the very end there, I could have gone into the Moonlight Sonata. Yeah, yeah you did. So, for the musicians or anyone in the review heard that, that was intentional. So, it all connects all the way back to that beautiful piece from Mozart, 1782. So, and the Moonlight Sonata. I, my schedule is outside with my dates for all next year, and I do have a few more dates publicly this year, and the Winter Lights calendar is on the back side of there too if you're interested in some holiday cheer. Blessings to all of you. Thank you so much.